Hi everybody. One of the biggest challenges in super macro underwater photography is getting the camera extremely close to your subject. Now in the last video I explained how to select your subject. Well once you've selected your subject in this video I'm going to explain four important steps in getting extremely close to your subject. Let's check it out. Okay, step one, give time to allow the subject to accept your presence. This sound, might sound weird, but once I spot a potential subject like this fish here, I will ignore it. I will look elsewhere and take some test shots of an adjacent rock or coral. This does two things. One, it lets me review my LCD information and make any adjustments that are necessary in aperture or strobe power, etc. And two, it allows the subject to get used to my presence and my strobe going off. Also, very important, I try to never look the subject in the eye. Hopefully the subject will get used to me in my strobe and might even become bored with my presence. And at some point, I begin my approach, my approach, which leads to step two, approach very slowly. All right, I gradually then point my camera at the subject while looking through the viewfinder and gradually get closer. If the subject does not swim away, then I'll start taking some, some shots, initially from a less than super macro distance. That way, at least if the subject leaves, I'll at least have one or two images of the subject. But at this time, the subject is also getting used to my strobe and my ever closer presence. Now when I do this, I watch my bubbles and I exhale very slowly and I make no sudden movements. Here's the little fish after it allowed a closer approach. And here it is when I got right up to it. Okay, now remember we have very poor depth of field with super macro and we must decide what part of the subject we want to lock on and be tech sharp. I usually go for the eye, but it's up to us. I lock my focus and rock closer and farther ever so slightly to hopefully ensure I get a few planes of focus where the exact plane of focus I want is, is uh, tech sharp. Now step three, once you're close, don't blow it, okay? Don't frighten your subject. Here I was very patient and finally got really close to the subject, the stargazer. I was shallow, about 15 feet with a sandy bottom, no surge, minimal current. I didn't have to worry about damaging the reef, and I'm ready to get some super macro shots. I took a few shots, but at some point I'm going to need to check my LCD information and maybe make adjustments in my strobe or aperture, etc. This is another time it's really important. Don't blow it. Don't make sudden movements. Okay? Now let me give you an example. Here's a super macro shot of a blenny after I got really close to it. Now I knew the background, even with shallow depth of field, I knew that background could be quite distracting. It was surrounded by coral and leaves. So I decided to open my aperture from f20 as seen in this image all the way open to f5 to try to eliminate the distracting background. However, even though it doesn't take much movement to change your aperture setting on my camera's housing, I slowly back away before I look at my camera and make any adjustments. And here's the same Blenny with an open aperture at f5. The background is much less distracting. And there's still a good part of the Blenny in focus, especially the eye, since I was parallel to its body. Now I might want to change my strobe position and do other things, but I must back away before doing this. Now sometimes after I capture my de desired super macro image, I might try to photograph other parts of the animal. I eventually got very close to this batfish that you see here and got a super macro shot of its eye. That's what I was going for. However, before just swimming away, I thought, let me try to get some other shots of this batfish. I moved the camera very slowly and got a macro shot of its mouth. I moved up and got the little tiny hair-like projections on the top of its head. And finally, after I've changed my aperture and stroke position, I might try to um, back off and approach the subject from a different angle. I did this and got a beautiful image from above it and got a picture of a side view of its cornea. Very cool. And finally, step four. Now you got all your images. When you're doing this, exit slowly. I was in Limbe, Indonesia and waiting for another photographer to shoot some macro shots of this cool coconut octopus. I patiently set up my compact camera for a close focus wide angle shot of the octopus in the foreground and my dive buddy in the background. 
I was very patient, but unfortunately when the previous photographer finished his macro shots, he strongly pushed himself off the seafloor with one hand and created a huge plume of severe backscatter seen here, even 40 to 50 seconds after, um, afterward. And I took one shot and left. The shot's not usable, way too much backscatter. I, I, I have neither the time nor the skill to eliminate all this backscatter. So, when you're done, don't forget all your manners and then scare the subject and stir up backscatter. <clears throat> well, I hope you found this video helpful. The most important steps, in my opinion, in getting extremely close to your subject are, one, allow time for your subject to accept your presence and get used to your strobe at a distance. Two, approach your subject very slowly. Three, once you're really close to your subject, make very slow movements. Do not frighten it. Okay, watch your bubbles move slowly. Back off when making any adjustments to your camera, strobe, and whatnot. And finally, four, when you're done, don't leave a plume of backscatter for the next photography. Leave very cautiously. Thanks a lot for your attention.